Folks, welcome back to the Taylor Tax Show. This is episode 10. I'm Terrence Taylor. He's Big Al Donnell Jr. Say what's up, Big Al. What's going on, everybody? And today, the podcast is here to do what we set out to do as the co-founders of Taylor Tax. We want to make sure that we help highly paid, highly taxed, and high-profile taxpayers like yourselves save a bunch on your taxes. We want to democratize the sophisticated tax strategies that the uber wealthy tend to use and bring it down to folks who are on the come up, if you will, folks who are making money and thinking about building into generational wealth. And much more importantly, we want to level the paying field so that the more you make, the less they take. So Big Al, what are we talking about today in episode 10? My brother, we're talking about all the tax benefits that you could derive from retirement. Wow, retirement. Okay, so yep. retirement and taxes. Correct, retirement and taxes. All right, fantastic. So tell us more. Great, great. Well, listen to me. This is a structure that you actually <laughs> oh, can, can told I me tell about. The structure? Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, set up that oh, structure. Okay, let me tell them the structure. So, folks, as we think about retirement and taxes, there are three buckets we want to make you aware of. When you retire, you're going to have income potentially in three buckets. The first bucket is the bucket where the income will be taxed. The second bucket is the bucket where the income is tax deferred. And Big Al will tell us more about the types of um, in, you know, products and um, accounts that we tend to have in this bucket. And then the third bucket, which is the sweet spot, is the tax-free bucket. And we will tell you our advice at the end of this podcast. Okay, Big Al, so that's the setup. Go Definitely. for it. And I, and I appreciate it. And, and the thing is, is that I want to kind of run down some of the ways that you're going to be getting paid retiring, retirement-wise yeah. from the taxed, tax-deferred, and tax-free standpoints. Yeah. I'm also going to kind of mention the, uh, the timing consequences of accessing yeah. these things. And um, and it all depends on what bucket it comes out of and what account it comes out of as well. Now, from the tax side, which is the 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 worst side, because we're here to help you not pay so much in taxes. All right, yeah. we're good Americans, so mm -hmm. of course we should pay taxes, but I think we should pay as few as possible. Well, you know? big guy, I just want to jump in here. We're good Americans, and the tax code, and the tax courts, and the IRS say that we should pay our fair share of taxes and not a penny more. Brother, so brother. we should pay what we're legally required to pay and uh -huh. not a penny more. Sadly, most people, because they don't understand the tax code, end up paying a lot more. Definitely. Please continue. No, I appreciate it. And, and the beautiful thing is that when you're providing a governmental service, level service to the economy, you shouldn't be paying tax. That, that is your way of paying taxes because you're yeah. benefiting the economy. The whole purpose of taxes is to benefit the economy. So if we could find ways of benefiting the economy, we are mm -hmm. effectively paying taxes, even if we pay zero to the IRS mm -hmm. or zero to your state. We're yeah. definitely not paying zero because we're creating a situation where hundreds of others are paying way more than they could have had we not provided our service. So anyways, being mm -hmm. a good American is being a good American. Yeah. <laughs> being a good so, human being, be honest with you, because we're global yeah. citizens, Terrence and I, yeah. and that's yeah. a huge thing we pride ourselves on and, and something that we're going to introduce in a later podcast, the aspect of taxes when it concerns being a global citizen and the international yeah. and transnational aspects of it. But, and by the way, if I'm talking too fast, let me know. I get excited when I talk fast when I get excited. And if I'm talking too fast, slow me down. But um, from the good, bro. Keep going. Good look it out. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right. So from the tax side, during retirement, you you could get retirement income from the selling of stock, from Social Security, from interest that your interest income, dividend income, capital gains, annuity. But like we mentioned before, that's in the taxed category. All mm -hmm. that money that you're pulling from those sources are going to be taxed on the regular, ordinary income tax levels. All right. Some of them are on the capital gains tax levels too, or the qualified dividends uh, tax level. But nonetheless, these are all completely taxed. All right. Uh, nonetheless, it's still good to have. All right. Yeah. Now on the tax deferred side, 
that's where you have your 401ks for those that work in the um, uh, in corporate. You got your 403bs, those that work for the government and nonprofits. You got your TSPs that work for the military. All right. Then you could also invest in a traditional IRAs, solo 401ks and SEP IRAs and simple IRAs and so forth. So all those types of IRAs and qualified retirement accounts are tax deferred, meaning that you are now able to defer whatever those annual limits are for that year. Uh, You could defer the taxes that you would pay to a future date. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, or the expectation is that that future date, you're in a lower tax bracket. So it all makes sense. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, But now tax free, which is Mm -hmm. where we are, where we want to be, where we are and are trying to get more into. All right. Uh, And where we want you to be. That's where life insurance comes into play. Mm -hmm. Roth IRAs come into play. Mm -hmm. Savings. And we could talk about it, but, you know, if you just have cash on the side, which we're not the biggest proponents of having too much cash because we think it should be working for you. Mm -hmm. Um, But then also loans. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Terrence, Mm -hmm. I know Terrence. uh, I'm not sure which episode particularly. He mentioned a lot about buy, borrow, die, that strategy. All right. And that's where a lot of the high, highly paid, highly taxed. High profile mm-hmm. individuals, which are our target market, mm-hmm. uh, can benefit from from the buy, borrow, die method. Because what yeah. we do is mm-hmm. we build up assets, mm-hmm. which then build up equity, mm-hmm. which we then can access tax free mm-hmm. to use to live off of. Because with these loan proce- proceeds, because what I mean by accessing a tax free is getting a loan against the equity. Yeah. Um, we can access that tax free because loans aren't taxed. And then Uh guess what? If we never pay it back until we die, then that Uh just lowers the death benefit when it comes to insurance or lowers Uh the amount that you get to pay, your family gets paid out when it Uh comes to liquidating that asset that you borrowed the equity on from Uh the equity. So, Uh um, so nonetheless, that's what we suggest. We suggest that you focus on, like, I believe our last podcast Uh was uh, the two podcasts ago was about insurance. All yes. Right? Uh, episode eight, I believe. And we're yes. on episode 10. Uh, yep. So episode eight was about insurance, which is a huge way, a tax free mm-hmm. way of accessing funds through retirement. Mm-hmm. We can talk more about that later on. Or yep. please check out our uh, episode eight of our, mm-hmm. our podcast. Um, then also Roth IRAs. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to tell you something from a backdoor Roth to mega backdoor Roths, to self-directed Roth IRAs. And y'all, we haven't even talked about stuff that Terrence and I are literally implementing mm-hmm. with covered calls, investment mm-hmm. strategies. However, we're not going to give you any investment advice. No, no, no. We can tell you what we're doing, yeah. but we're not going to give you any investment advice. But there's ways that if you have a self-directed IRA, that you mm-hmm. could grow that a lot quicker than what these... Mm-hmm other outfits are telling you could be grown at, yeah. uh, that you could, act, and I, who, who's, who's the white haired guy that, uh, that's a billionaire, Bill Ackerman or not. Bill Ackerman. Right? Yeah. Bill Ackerman that has grown like a billion dollar Roth IRA or a yeah. multi-billion dollar Roth IRA. Yeah. Yeah. By investing his own funds in it. Now he's a financial guru. Mm-hmm. We're financial gurus in our own rights too, mainly from a tax <laughs> standpoint. <laughs> tax and insurance and yeah and in other investments but nonetheless that's where we want you to live that's what we want you in that, to inhabit the buy mm-hmm. borrow die method mm-hmm. where you buy and build assets that mm-hmm. generate equity that you can borrow from mm-hmm. tax free mm-hmm. also by self directed mm-hmm. or alternatively directed Roth IRAs and then you know, a, a very comprehensive strategy around how you utilize life insurance yes. to access things. And but, um, I want, can yeah. I jump in there on the, on the life insurance part? Because you also talked about access and consequences. So folks, this is where it gets really beautiful with life insurance. And you begin to connect these dots among these six things that we told you that you can use to make sure you optimize your tax game and save as much as you can on taxes. When you have 
life insurance as a way for you to save for retirement, the beautiful thing is you can access the funds before the ages that you're required to access them when you have the tax deferred products like the 401ks and the likes, right? And the beautiful thing is you also control how much you can take out or how much you take out of that particular life insurance policy through the policy loans. So here's a bucket where you get money tax-free. You determine when you take the money out with no consequences. You can take it out as early as you want or leave it and take it out as late as you want. And the amount that you can take out is also not prescribed to you because with the 401ks, you have these required minimum distributions where you're told how much you have to take money out by, or there's some very steep tax consequences if you don't take out what the government says you should take out, when the government says you should take it out. So something for you to be very aware of and make sure you do. Agreed. Agreed. And I'm, I appreciate you bringing up the timing consequences for accessing some of these things, primarily the, these timing consequences associated with a lot of the tax deferred uh, sources of retirement income, as well as one of the tax free, which is the Roth IRA. But once again, when you build up equity, you could borrow against that equity. Uh, but for the timing standpoint for IRAs, like it's 59 and a half. You got to wait until you're 59 and a half to access that tax free or, or from the tax deferred standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. And then with Social Security, I think, you know, you could start getting it at 62, but you got to wait till 67 to get the full benefits. And like, like who's really trying to wait till they're 67 to live <laughs> their life? Right. Um, I'm not saying that you can't live your life without retirement income, but I'm, I'm just saying it's, uh, you know, these restrictions. I don't like I don't like man-made restrictions, to be honest with you. I, mm. I really don't. I really don't. I'm I'm. I got, even with my daughters, I'm teaching them to follow the follow laws, but break the rules. All right. Now, listen to me. Don't ever break tax rules. All yeah, right? Please. Because they're laws. All right. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. What, but like, listen to me when they're telling you, hey, look, y'all, here's a test, but it's an open book test. You'd be foolish not to bring your freaking book. And what we're telling you is like, hey, look, here's the book. That you neglected to read because it was yeah. so thick. Yeah. And here, let we've highlighted some pages and put some yeah. some sticky notes on there. Yeah. Please yeah. go to this page when it comes to retirement. Go to this page yeah. when it comes to insurance. Go to this yeah. page when it. We've read the book for you. Yeah. We've annotated the book, yeah. highlighted this bad boy. Yeah. Please look at it when it comes to these things, and and we're yeah. gonna help navigate you and direct you on how to pass this test with flying colors. And Big Al, I remember when I was studying, there were these things called cliff notes, right? So where you didn't have Another to necessarily one. read the entire Another book. Another one, yeah. You could read the cliff notes. So in many ways, we've read the book for you. That's talk why we're talk. enrolled agents, right? We had to talk read the, the, yeah, we had to read the code. We had to understand the code and we had to pass those three tests. Now we're bringing you the cliff notes version to say, when it comes to retirement, think about those three buckets. And folks, do your best to make sure that you have funds in each of the buckets. But if you had to decide like where the bulk of your funds, 50 plus percent should be, let it be in the tax free bucket because you get the money tax free. And the other nice thing, Big Al, is when you access retirement funds through an insurance product, if you do it correctly, you don't trigger taxes. Exactly. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Terrence. This Tax free is sucker free. You hear me? <laughs> Tell me. I say, mm -hmm. if you want to stay sucker free, stay mm -hmm. tax free. All right. Like and mm -hmm. um, and and the thing is, is like if we're talking about an order, tax free mm -hmm. first, tax yes. deferred second, mm -hmm. taxed third. Yes. The thing is, is it's just so easy to build up the taxed part right now, mm -hmm. and it takes so long because of all the restrictions for the tax deferred. And uh -huh. it takes sometimes so much, or you would think that it takes so much to build up a tax free, but what we're here to do is to let you know, no, you have access to it. Yeah. I know we're focusing on a lot of the uh, highly taxed and highly paid, uh -huh. but even for those that aren't as highly taxed and as uh -huh. highly paid, 
Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we want to demystify this, this fog that suggests that it takes millions of dollars mm -hmm. to access some of the tax free opportunities mm -hmm. for retirement, mm -hmm. life insurance being a huge one. Yeah. And don't forget about starting a business. Yeah. Because that's how you build an asset that builds equity that you yeah. can borrow from and yeah. that you can utilize yeah. for your future from Invest. a tax-free standpoint. Invest in real estate is another thing. So folks, we told you that there are six levers. And just to close and recap these levers, today we talked to you about retirement, right? So that was level, level five from when we first told you about it. Building a business, starting a business and building it is level one. Investing in real estate is lever two. Insurance is lever three. Actually, I think uh, retirement, no, strategic gift giving was level four. four. We already talked yep. about retirement, and mm -hmm. then we'll talk about estate plan for episode 11. So, folks, this is the time we wanted to spend with you today. We're so pleased that you joined us. We hope you got nuggets from this. And re remember, we're giving you this information. We are qualified tax professionals. We're enrolled agents. If you want to work with us so you know how to structure things for your specific tax situation, feel free to get in touch. Terrence at tailoredtax.ai or Big Al at tailoredtax.ai. And whatever you do, don't forget to check out Tax Strategies GPT. You can find it on OpenAI. So when you are using ChatGPT, search for Tax Strategies GPT. It's our customized GPT to help you to understand the tax game. All right, folks. See you soon. Cheers.